this is the Team B, and today we're going to be doing the Dark Explorer set review. We'll be going alphabetically, which is also by the colors, starting at green. Uh, first Pokemon that's somewhat interesting, Venusaur, with its ability Flower Scent. Is, is that going to be any use? Um, considering it's a stage two, I don't think it's going to be that good, because and it's, stage two is for a treat as well. Yeah. And it's just a bench there because this attack is pretty expensive for a mediocre effect. Well, it's not mediocre, but I guess it's not worth it's it in this format. And it's 70. Yeah, and, sounds good. And Floral Scent, it's good, but it's not that good. Uh, yeah. Chances are with Venusaur, you'll be using it in a grass deck, in which case you can just use Sunflora from Heart Gold anyway, or Heart Gold Soul Silver, sorry. Yeah, that's probably um, going to be better in most scenarios. And people don't even play that now, so... Yeah, now there's not really any grass decks around. Anyways, moving on, let's talk about Carnivine. Um, Luring Poison is... If that's an attack, it does poison and switch, or switches the opponent's Pokemon and poisons them. That's usually been a good attack in the past with previous Pokemon that had it. Is it good now? If uh, Trainer Lock's been dead, or seemingly dead... Um, and the only use I could see for this would be against Trainer Lock, or maybe even in Trainer Lock, I guess. Um, so if Trainer Lock, in the form of Vile Plume, comes back, I can see this maybe warranting a spot in CMT. Mm -hmm. Almost everything right now plays, like, either very high switch counts, Darkrai, or Skyro to make almost all their basics for your treat, so Lure Poison isn't very powerful at all. Mm -hmm. It's. I mean, it would seem like it would be powerful against the, uh, like, stage 2 Pokemon that had huge retreat, like, before. Like, how Muck was effective in those Mudex, but I guess the formats shifted away from that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, I mean, it, it, I like it, but I don't think it's good in this format. Um, moving on, uh, Excelgore, uh, de de deck and cover, is like, it seems powerful, but... It's an interesting card. I like the effect. Uh, the problem is it shuffles into your deck, and it might be able, it might be difficult to chain that even if you're using Mew from um, Triumphant. It's and good, but eventually you're gonna miss an attack, and then your opponent takes another an extra prize lead if you haven't already. Yeah, like the type of deck you have to play this in would probably be like a a trainer lock deck, and then you're already behind. And you'd have push up something with a high HP count. Yeah, so. I think you would push up Gothitelle in this situation instead of running Bile Plume because it could yeah, maybe. take take a hit from something. And so then you, you can also you also get the benefit of catcher, yeah. level ball, etc. Yeah. Yeah. So you can probably just do that and you'd probably have to play a high count of max potion so you don't get one shotted afterwards. And then you'd have to play like Switch and or like Dodrio to like retreat or the Gothitelle. It kinda yeah. seems like it's the same kind of effect that, um, the, um, what's it called? <clears throat> what, am I, what am I thinking of? The, Vanillax? Uh, Vanillax. It has the same effect where you try to just lock them paralyzed active. Yeah. The but... problem is, the difference is, well, Vanillax, it's, it, it will fail occasionally, but you're always going to be able to get another, like, Mew out to, par to paralyze, but with Excelgor, you're going to whiff a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unless you play like some form of some form of energy acceleration, and you're already talking about playing Gothitelle, and that's any, like, quite a bit to fit in. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. There's probably not too much there that's not already been done. Next, moving into Fire Blaziken. It's really a worse Reshiram, pretty much. Well, well it's although it, it only discards one energy, it's a stage two. Um, so... Like, all the stats are technically better than Reshiram, but... Except for Outrage. Yeah. It, yeah, and also it lacks Outrage. Yeah. Yeah, but, like... But it's a stage two. Yeah, it might not even be better that you only discard one, because it was kind of... Reshiram was good because you discarded two energy, so Mewtwo would hit it for very little. Yeah. So, yeah. who knows if that's an upside or downside. But, yeah, it doesn't seem like... It seems like Reshiram would be more efficient of an attacker. Mm -hmm. Even if, like, what is it, like, 10 HP difference and, like, 10 attack difference. Um, moving on to, like, the best card in the set ever, Eat More. 
hot lick. Well, what other card destroys like the one archetype? Yeah, like, this, completely. Th- like this is actually a single card that if you play, you just you literally will always beat the archetype as long as you don't prize it or they don't like mill it before you play it. Even if they mill it, you can revive or super on because yeah. it is a basic. But that would be and, the worst feeling ever. It's like, oh, you got your heat more, and you're ready to beat the Durin player, and they go first, they mill you for four, they mill your Durin or, or your heat more and revive. Uh, like, and it's, it's uh, so splashable too. Like initially yeah, like, when I saw the card, I thought it'd be like I thought it'd be like maybe you'd have to use a fire energy, you'd have like two retreat or something. But now this thing just has like everything. Yeah, like if your format was heavy for Durant, you'd probably play it, but like I don't think I'd probably play two if it was a heavy Durant format. I guess if it was really heavy, but I don't think you're gonna need to play it anyway. I think Durant's probably just dead. I, I think, think, I think we're gonna see sorry, go ahead. I don't even care. I'll play two heat more fifty eight energy if it's a heavy Durant format. <laughs> um I, I think we're think. gonna see a lot of this at Battle Roads, but as we shift towards nationals, a lot of people are gonna be dropping this from their list. Yeah. yeah but e- even with or without this card, I think Durant's kinda dead with Cards like Dark Rye in the set, but yeah, that's an that's an interesting card to note. Moving on, there is um Volcarona, which its ability and its attack kind of seem to have some synergy. Is there anything there? Burn is the worst status to have, I think. I guess other um, than confusion. Oh, well, no, I think confusion. With Volcarona's ability is that you're not sure you're placing damage counters. Like your opponent could just flip all heads, and then you you have a wasted ability. Yeah. It kind of seems like it makes it, like, if you get more heads, it's way better, but if you get more tails, it's way worse. Like, like yeah. it's, it's higher variance, I guess. Yeah. It's a fun league deck, most likely. Yeah. But even like, if your opponent flips tails the first time, you still, you're still you still only doing one, 110, which isn't that good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's probably just more impressive things to be doing. Uh, if we get something... This is theory, of course, but if we get something later that burns for a cheaper cost, I can see this being playable. Yeah, or like something that could guarantee burn. Like guarantee burn yeah. flips, I mean. Well, we have that. We have Magby. Oh, yeah. No, is it is Magby oh. guarantee? Like it, yeah, Mer- Magby is guarantee for no energy. Oh. Oh, no, no guarantee the did. flips. Like, yeah. water oh, no. Yeah, 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 no. Like he more level X, dude. He oh, trembled flex. Cool. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay, moving on uh, to. Wait, where was I? Oh yes, water. um, water types in Polion. That card's like a jump fluff, but it has a draw ability. So it must be the greatest thing ever, right? It's an interesting oh, card. Uh, I'm uh, I don't want someone else to start before I get into what I have to say about Empoleon. Um, the, my thought process is like it's it's a stage two, so you need rare candies and stuff. Um, basically, if you can get it out early on, it's really, really good. Like, you just chain and pull and you get, like, two or three out, like, on the same turn or whatever, and you just have, like, your set up completely. But it's those times where you don't get a pull on out, where you just, you're just, like, you, you, you can get just six sold and just never get an Empoleon out the entire game. So, it's kind of like, like, in my games that I've tested with this deck, you either win or else you get, like, really, really behind. Yeah, what I've noticed from my limited testing with the deck is that it has pretty good comeback ability. I have a, I've like gotten pretty yeah. late Empoleons, and I've still been able to bring games either close or win them. Um, yeah. I think you you good. definitely have to pair this up with Trakion, though. You don't listen to anything else about Aerodactyl or straight Empoleon. I guess you have to run this with Trakion in EXP share. Yeah, I mean the weakness is huge, being that uh, like eel variant decks are pr- probably the uh, biggest and, deck right now. And Trakion is just so powerful against the format being all weak to fighting, pretty much. Yeah, like with all the lightning types and dark cry, all that yeah, stuff. Pretty much the two big decks. I yep. think those. Yeah, that it would be that would be interesting to see if like that those two that combination would like cover all the bases when it comes to decks to be. Um, the other thing about Empoleon is that Diving Draw can help you recover off N. Yeah. Yeah. You can also use it to abuse N. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's that's inter- that's a good effect that it's more resilient, which it's kind of weird because it's more you think of more of like a super aggressive attacker, but then it also has this drawing ability, which is good to uh, defending like people that try to abuse those like weaker late games you have. But yeah, and th- um, another thing I would like to point out. Like, would be that 
And Polion's attack is basically the same as Jump Love's, and with Jump Love, um, uh, like, early on, well, not early on, but, like, people had learned to play against it by, like, benching, like, not a lot of Pokemon on their side of the field, so its damage count, damage cap is, like, limited. And now, with, like, all of these EXs carrying, like, 170 to 180, like, HP, you attach, like, an XP, uh, you attach, like, an EV light on it, and you have, like, two Pokemon on your side of the bench, on your side of the field, and they have, like, six on their side. You're doing 60 with EV light, so. Yeah, it's three shot. It's, yeah. you know. It's just. I, I still think it's going to be a competitor, uh, going towards nationals. Yeah, yeah, me here. Like, the thing is, like, against Eeldex, they're probably going to have a max bench or around a max because they need to have the Eels out and play and everything. Yeah. But decks like CMT, I can see CMT having... Uh, CMT just, and Darkrai can just go all in with Tornadus yeah, they or They can just Darkrai. have, like, a really small bench size and be completely fine with it. Yeah. So, like, before, like, if you played against Jump Luff, you were playing less bench, but you were kind of suffering in some way or another. Yeah. But yeah. Not now, it is. Um, anyways, moving on into Lightning type, which we play on week two. Plus Soul and Minel. That combo. Uh, mining's interesting with the spread. I don't see much use for these cards outside of a draft format. They, they are the nuts in a draft. They take too much bench space for their uh, benefit. Which yeah. might work in Empoleon for plus soul. Yeah, possibly. But I it's guess, just like, but... Well, it's uh, just the, like yeah. the possibility of prizing it, I guess. Yeah. But drawing Bas- eight is pretty good. Basically, you can choose, like, Cleffa, Smeargle, or these. Um, yeah, pretty much Clefa right. Ha- Clefa, these take up two bench space. Cleffa is a free prize for Darkrai, so... Smeargle's, Smeargle's hit or miss. Yeah, pretty much. But with, with so many decks running Sky Arrow now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, the relevant thing is also Minel, like, it's attack uh, electric shower. Like, that's actually a, a decent attack for a base. Yeah, it is. Like, I don't know if it, it'll be... It'll um have any effect... But like it's it's a decent attack for a basic like that, mm-hmm. and that'd be something to look forward to. Um, anyways, moving on to probably um, what people are going to consider more important decisions and cards are the Tynamos. Do either of these do they replace the standard Tynamos? The Charge Beam one will definitely not. It's counterproductive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yep. Getting energy in the discard. I don't want two energy on my Tynamo. Thank you. The Spark one though is. Interesting, at least. Um, the 10 damage it. can set up some important kills early on. Yeah, it kind of acts yeah. like a plus power. In a sense. Yeah, it just basically acts like you're a plus power. You can put it on like a Mewtwo. You can put it on like a Tornadus or a Zekrom, amongst a myriad of other things. So yeah, it works. But right now, I think we could all agree that like 30 HP Tynamos are not are no longer the they're plan. They're dead. We'll yeah. explain why later, Probably. but they're they're dead. <laughs> I, I right now I'm playing a two two split of Thunderwave and Spark, so Yeah, I can as see a, that. As am I. They both have their uses. Yeah. Um moving on, um do you think that Electros would have any slot in the Eels deck as a one of, maybe? No, I don't I, I, I did think so a while ago, but it has a four energy cost for the same thing that Catcher does. Yeah. Well, the six, yeah, and the attack is only 60. Like, to me, if it was the 3, that would be... Okay. You could think of doing that. But, like, 4, I think it, it just puts out of, of of a possibility. I guess this has another situational thing where if Vileplume makes a surge, you could play this. Yeah. Yeah, my main thing is just basically I'm killing my electric for you by evolving. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah actually, yeah. It's like, yeah, you're doing... It's kind of productive in a sense because you're probably not going to get as much value as you would from a new yeah. from Electros. Actually, can I just mention the other E Electric for a second? Yep. Um, it basically it I, I could see this maybe being used as a one of in E Electric decks uh, because although I don't know how many situations you'd have an extra Tynamo to use, uh, you could turn this into an eighty. I guess you could already do that with Thunderous, but. But, yeah, it's, it's another way of, like, doing 80, which that and a plus power kills Tornado CX, right? Yeah. Yeah. So who knows? It, it could have a role. I don't see it being better than Thunderous, but you I, never know. I wouldn't want to, like, draw this when I want another eel, though. Yeah. Definitely. And yeah, then I'd rather play Thunderous rather than this. Yeah. 
Yeah, I also wouldn't want to pay the two retreat costs after I've shock bolted that as well. Yeah. Yeah, that would actually be pretty brutal. Um. Anyways, after talking about the eels, let's move on to um Espion. Its abilities seems interesting. There isn't really much that it blocks right now. If well, again, if Vileplume makes a surge because Vileplume seems to be good with trainer lock or sorry status condition decks, then maybe Espion will have a spot in decks. Let's see. We keep on note. Like, we keep on saying if Vileplume becomes good, we just play this. Like it seems yeah, like I, there's already all the counters to it. Yeah. Apparently, they made a bunch of Vileplume counters after Vileplume died. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> seems legit. I mean, yeah. The only deck you just want to like, make sure it doesn't come back. Although, keep it down. You gonna say anything, Jack? Oh, I said although um, it does evolve from Eevee, so hopefully it gets playable. Yes, Jack, because Eevee is okay. the greatest Pokemon ever. It is. Yeah, it is. But I mean, the only deck that's like kind of in this format is the Vanillix deck, and that that kind of hurts it. Yeah. But I don't think it's big enough that you'd play a one-one SP online for it. Um, yes, anyways, moving on to other interesting things. This is Hov Kofa Grigas. Said it right, right? Yep. Yes. <laughs> I, I want this card to be playable, but there's like, there's only four, to, there's a maximum of 16 cards you can run to put towards this damage. That's also a bad thing, because having taken putting so six, much Yeah, blood. putting 16 slots for that just seems horrible. And then it's only 40 times. You'd have to discard 5 to kill an EX. Oh, God. And then you have basically no way other than Junk Arm to get them back. And recycle. Or recycle on a flip. But but there's 16 tools, right? If you get like if you get 15 in play, you kill 3 Xs and you just win. That's true. <laughs> yes, it is, Ricky. <laughs> yes, it does. Yay. How much value is it, like, yeah, Junk Arm being a tool? It's, like, uh... <laughs> I don't Not think you get very. any positive off it. <laughs> so, like, three cards for 40 damage? Yep. Uh, and the junk, using up a junk arm, which those cards are usually good, apparently. Apparently. Apparently, Next yeah. Time we get, I think we get two more tools, so... Yeah. Push the cap to 24. Sweet. Trying to push the Almost deck half your deck is made up of tools. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> yep, I can see that going. Oh, a 10-card oh. hand? How many tools do you have? Eight. We're good. Yep, okay, hey, you're sending your deck out, you can just play them, you know? Yep. <laughs> yes, you it, would there Can Coffergris use any of the tools in the format? Yeah. Or oh. no, it can use EXP Share and oh, uh, Rocky Helmet. Okay, yeah. I was just thinking, like, all of them are basic types, so there's a bunch of tools where you can't even use it, other than discarding. That well, seems like yep. it. Okay, anyways, moving on. Um, Aerodactyl we'll talk about later. Moving on is Disabilite, which actually works well with Coffergris. Yeah, so, uh, I personally don't like Sableye because you're giving up a turn. Apparently, it's getting some some play in Japan though. That's on, yeah, that's with black and white on. Yeah, that's they're true. playing in a different format, but I, I don't know. If you get some, you keep them, but you're not playing them now. I don't think anyone's going to trade for these. They're uncommon. Yeah, that yeah. think they're going to have a problem. Better hold on. No, you just yeah, you they're just hold go off. off. You never know. You never know what. Like, come on. Like, Random. think about it. Remember when? What? Remember when we just re, when we started ro- like last season when they did a mid-season rotation, and then everyone was looking around for Cluffas and like Tyrogues and stuff. And then they were all fifty cents, and I bought ten of them. Uh, yeah, we bought yeah, like yeah, a yeah, dollar each, I, and they went yeah, up to ten dollars or five. I see how it is. Awesome. Okay, anyways, I think we're getting off topic. Moving yeah. on. No, what are you talking about? Okay, well, anyway. okay, Sableye, you, you can use it to cycle dark patches, which we'll talk about later. But would, um, you, would you play Sableye in, the, in a dark deck? You have to play it in a dark deck. I, I think well, that, that would be the only way to <laughs> that, play Yeah, that's the only deck you could play it in, but like, do you think... Whether like, you play it or not, though, is... Um, I don't... I Personally, I don't play it, but I could see one. Um... Yeah. Right I, now, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I just um, noticed that in black and white on, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but in black and white on, um, there's no junk arm. <gasps> and this fills the role of junk arm, so... You I can have see... dunk and it's attacking. Yeah, there you yeah. go. I can see some uses for it. And put arm. They'll let us do that, right? Overall, not a bad card. Yeah, yeah. I, guess I can see it being played now and in the future. 
Yeah, it's uh, a, it's a it's a good dark type that you can dark patch too. And there's usually not a lot of good dark type Pokemon. And it's not an EX, and it's uh, and it's not a stage one. That it's a basic. <sighs> really? Okay, moving on to other good dark types is um the combination of Zoru and Zork from the set. We'll start with Zoru, the Ascension one. Obviously, that's the best one. Ascension's pretty cool. I mean, the last time it generally had, is that was legit. Like, there's the Shuppet deck. There's the Shuppet one. That was really good. Yeah. This is real. This is really good because decks are so fast now. But if you Ascension turn one, it's actually pretty difficult to do 100 turn one. So you can av- so you can possibly avoid a turn one KO on the so. main attackers. And uh, for anyone who was wondering, like before, uh, I remember reading on Jim and other boards that there, some were uh, like some were wondering if you could actually use Ascension turn one because that's a rule say they you can yeah you 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 can yeah. basically. so like yeah that's people it. didn't know that you could you yeah. can use Ascension to bypass the evolving turn one rule yeah yeah um, just a heads up there I don't know how many people didn't know but there you go just yep. making sure yep. But, uh, yeah, um, next, talking about the Pokemon that you actually ascension into, the new Zoric. What's that? Um, I've actually done testing with the deck, like, um, no, with, like, Zoroark, Weavile, and Darkrai. Uh, I, I've gotten, like, turn to 150 before, but oftentimes it's just not enough, because 100, 100 HP is really KOable, and then, when, like, once you lose, you can't keep chaining, like, Zoroarks over and over, and... It does not have the draw that Empoleon yeah. has, so... Mm-hmm. When like, you're dead, you're dead. Eventually, you're gonna run out. Have a turn where you can't get another Zeru on your bench, and it's like, oh, yeah. if he knocks me out now, I kind of just lose, don't I? Yep. Mm-hmm. And but, even even if you get, like, a turn to 150 or a 100... You're not it, carrying anything. Yeah, you're not KOing an. Um, you're not KOing or anything yeah. too important, really. Yeah. However, if you, if you, if they do ninety to you, you can dark rush and knock out in the X. Whoa! Yeah. Whoa! Uh, thank you, thank you. I never knew that. Well, no, you might not be able to. You might have a DCE on it instead. Yeah, but uh, you might also have two darks. All right. I mean, I don't. I don't think people are gonna run into that. I think most of the time, it's, if. It's, not that likely, but most yeah. people don't even know what 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 Dark Rush does. So, well, yes, you could say that. I don't think that's gonna be a problem though. But anyways, moving on. That's the last of the Pokemon. Let's actually go into some trainers. Uh, first one being Dark Claw, which actually works with the Pokemon we've just been mentioning. Well, it's supposed to work. With it. Pretty interesting card. I mean, it's an auto. Double it's a plus double power. plus power. Yeah. I think Eviolite is going to be more important for Darkrai, though, so... I find Eviolite more important because it avoids two-hit KOs and turns them into three-hit KOs, as opposed to turning two-hit KOs into easier two-hit KOs. That being said, you should still run a Dark Claw or two because it is a free 20 damage. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and it's good in the Zoric decks because Zoric can't use Eviolite. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that seems like a, it'll be a good card, but just usually as a one of. But Dark Patch, on the other hand, will be another card played in Dark Decks, but it's probably going to be played more than one of. Uh, we have some pretty conflicting opinions on this. I, I don't... I, I understand that Dark Patch is a very good card, but I just... I'd rather play Electric, so I don't see the benefit in playing a Dark Deck over Electric, just because of this card. Darkrai is better than, than anything Eels can have. So. No, I, I know that, but the energy acceleration from Eel is better than this. But Eel is a stage one, and this th- you can get this out turn one. It's not very likely, but you can. It's it's a trainer, so you can get it out so, so, so it doesn't give up a prize just by being in your deck. It doesn't have a 30 HP basic, or 40 HP basic, so it's not easily donked. And... You can you can get it you can get it mid mid to late game even if they kill all your stuff. Um, it's it, not as consistent energy yeah. itself throughout the entire game, but with four dark patch and four junk iron, that's probably all you're gonna really need. Yeah, but like usually not, junk like dark patching for one isn't always what you need. Like usually, I think you want to set up dark patches for two, especially if you're attacking with, attacking with dark right ex. Like you need three energy. 
It's only if you're going for a turn one or if you have to like power it up it entirely in one turn. Like you if if you're going for turn two, which is much more doable, then you only need one dark patch. Mm-hmm. Which isn't that bad. But again, like how you said it is it's less consistent, but consistency is it seems like it's very important in this format. Like so it's be- less by consistent, I mean, it's, it do, doesn't give you energy every turn, every, sure. every turn of the game. It's also not searchable. Yeah, it's not searchable, but, um, however, it's, what, what it does do is that you can get it, you, you can, um, you can, like, get, get the energy when, you're probably gonna be able to get the energy by turn two. In the discard and a dark patch in hand, that's mm-hmm. it's pretty easy with all the discard stuff in the format right now. Yeah, Ultra Ball, Junk Arm, Juniper, Smeargle. Mm-hmm. But like, okay, here let me ask you this: like, like for for Lightning decks, there's the Eel Engine. For Grass, anything that can use Grass Energy for attacks, there's the Celebi Engine. This is like the Dark Engine. Which engine do you think is the best overall for its type? Like, if they didn't have... Like, ignoring the attackers? Ignoring the attackers, which is the best engine? I think it's a tie between Dark and Eel. Because your energy doesn't have to be in your hand. Yeah, that's the thing about Celebi. But, like, usually... Celebi's the worst, but it it can... It's, like, the most... It can uh, give colorless attackers, too. Yes. Fast, so... Dark and Eel, they benefit because it doesn't have to be from your hand, and they both have their weaknesses and strengths. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's just the main thing is that like with eel, once you, once you get eels, they if they don't get knocked out, when you get end, it, like you can still have your energy acceleration. Whereas if you have like say like say for example you use sable Law, right, and you go like junk hunt for like two dark patches, what's stopping you from getting end and losing those like dark patches? Yeah, but we're not talking mo- much. We're not talking as much about the value of dark patch now. We're talking about sable Law's value. Yeah, I guess, yeah. I guess. Um, with like with dark patches, I don't know, cause like, like in my opinion, like once you get, because you only have four dark patches, and at most you have four junk arms with that for a total of eight, and most of the time you are using junk arm for other, other like other situations, like for like say catcher and stuff. So ideally, you'd have less. And then when you dark patch, when you dark patch, you need energies in the discard. But once you use up your, once you use up your dark patches, you're you're pretty much like, I would kind of want these energies back into my deck right now if you have too many in there. Honestly, for my testing, you only need to dark patch four, maybe five times in game, because they're, unless they're one hit KOing dark right, you're gonna have a turn of where you can attach. Yes. And if uh, they are one hit KO in Dark Ride, and we're probably doing that with Terrakion, and then you can DC to Tornadoes, blow through, and extra attach and power blast. Mm-hmm. So you don't really need Dark, like, to Dark Patch every turn of the game. No, like, yeah, the other two engines where they they kind of both need to be used consistently in almost every turn. Um, that I think that's pretty much for, like, Dark Patch. Like, the way I see it is, like, um, eel, the eel engine, it's more on the consistent but slower way, but the Celebi engine is more on the faster but a bit more you can miss it way. And like Dark Patch kind of seems to be in the middle that it can be fairly fast and it can yeah. be fa- okay in consistency because it can be junk armed. So yeah. I think it kind of it's it's kind of in the middle there, and it'll be it. Of course, it's going to be good in the dark decks. It's just are the dark decks going to be good enough with it? Yeah, pretty yeah. much. I think we can yeah. agree on that. Yeah. Um, moving on, there's Enhanced Hammer, which is, uh, Loss Remover reprint. Uh, for now, use Loss Remover because there's a very slim chance that your opponent's running something like Recycle that can get the special energy out of the discard. Yeah. So, just run Loss Remover for now. When it, when Loss Remover rotates, you can run this. Yeah, it's just nice or to know that. Or one both. Yeah. If you want to run Super four value. of each, go ahead. I yeah, think totally. I would run Crushing Hammers more. before I run Enhanced Hammer, though. Well, if you already play four. Well, then, yeah, go ahead. Then you just go <laughs> hammer time. I just play four crushing hammer, four enhanced hammer, four, four lost remover. Yeah. Seems They're legit. And four shop it from top yeah. <laughs> Yes. Um, I mean, it's good to know that or in the sorry, future Bayonet there's going to be ways to get rid of special energies, like double colorless and yeah. whatever else we have by then. Um, moving on to supporters is Hooligans, Jim, and Cass. 
I don't like it because it's on a flip. <laughs> yeah. That's, but yeah. it's, it's one of those cards where if you, you your opponent drops it down, you're praying that they flip tails because they flip you head. You were in so but much I, trouble. I mean, think about it like this: you can, you can, you have the option. You can get a brand new hand, or you could yeah. play a card that you that has fifty percent chance of not working at all. And even if it does work, it's free random cards, so you have a small chance of not getting anything good at all. We're not arguing that though, but we're just we're just arguing what it feels like to be playing against this. Yeah, it's really, really like, frustrating. They, hard if they to play drop against. it, you're just like, oh my gosh. Especially yeah, if they do a turn it. one on you before you even get to start. Oh, you're down to four card hand or whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, or like, we're like, th- we're like situations where you have like a th- you have a low hand size where you just you just have like three cards and you have a juniper or whatever, and then <laughs> it's all gone. Yeah. I mean, I think it's mainly the flip that makes it unplayable. But how would this card? What would you think this card would be like if it was automatic? I it'd be one or two. It'd be like it'd be, yeah, I think it'd be a really good card then. Yeah, it'd be um, like it would. It would be like it'd be as good as cards. almost as good as N. Yeah, yeah, I think it'd be a good one. I, but, I put my end count higher first and then run this card. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it isn't. So this card is overall <laughs> fairly bad. <laughs> okay, <laughs> moving on. I always figure that out. Yes, it is. Okay, moving on is um random receiver, which can get us hooligans. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> Although I would not want to waste my random receiver on a hooligan. Yes, I, I don't so, think so either. With receiver, well, with supporter train, with like trainers that search for supporters, you have three options: X transceiver, Poke Gear, and random receiver. Oh my gosh, X transceiver is in the format. <laughs> yep. X transceiver is on a flip, so you have fifty percent chance of getting any supporter you like. Poke Gear is top seven. So you could whiff entirely on on supporters again, but or you um, could get that, like, you could get seven different supporters. Probability yeah. of that's really low, but random receiver, you're guaranteed a supporter, but it's the first one in in your deck. So it's random, and you're also revealing your deck. So yeah, but that, that seems like a minor issue. Yeah, yeah. X transceiver is bad. Um, <sighs> you you have more chance of flipping tails unless you play like I don't I don't even know. Unless you run hot, hotter than the sun. Um, <clears throat> with Poke Gear, you it's not as good early game as Random Receiver because your deck is bigger. You have more chance of whiffing. Um, and with Random Receiver early game, you just want a supporter in general. But if you play Poke, if you play Collector, then Gear is better. Um, later game though, Poke Gear gets better because your deck is smaller. You have more chance of hitting a supporter. And you're also searching your deck basically. And if you random receiver into an N where you have like one or two prizes left, you're just like it, it doesn't help your out your situation at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. In but deck- with poker, you can dr- go deeper and get like a contra juniper that you want. Could you see decks having a mix of these two? Yeah. yeah. I think it's going to come down to preference, pretty yeah. much. Mm-hmm. They're both both poker gear and this are good cards. I mean, one of the worst feelings in the world is. Jug carving for a poke gear and, and then whipping in the world. I think it's the game. Okay, game, whatever. <laughs> in the world. But, uh, oh no. But, but ran receiving in, into into an N can be equally as bad. So. Yeah. Yeah. It just comes down to how what what kind of your how your deck plays and what kind of cards you're playing. And I mean, I don't have the statistics on it, like which makes what better in what case scenario, depending on what supporters you play, but. Someone They'll even out, out though if you if you added up all the different scenarios. That yeah, you, you should even out. Um, moving on to um, a stadium now, which is Twist Mountain, which also works with the Aerodactyl and old Amber Aerodactyl fossil. Have we got in this set. Well, it just works with Aerodactyl. Yeah, yeah pretty yeah, much. Yeah, other pretty fossils much. are unplayable. Uh, it other... lets you skip that horrible, horrible fossil rule that they gave us. But on a flip. Yeah, but it is a stadium, so it's not like a one-time use. The stadium doesn't. It's probably not going to benefit your opponent either. Yeah, so that's it's kind of like it's a one-sided stadium, which is a good start. Well, and the thing is, is that you can only use it once per turn. So if you flip tails, then you have to wait till next turn before being able to try again. Then you can yes. flip tails again. Woo. Yeah, but it's good for a card we'll mention later on. So. Aerodactyl? No, tornadoes, but yeah. 
Um, yeah, but I, I think the only Gaul use is... of hmm? the, the only use I see for this thing is Aerodactyl because everything else is needs to evolve. Yeah, um, all the other fossils at the moment. So. Yes. Although yeah. it is a way to get um, art shops out and train a lock. Yeah, but yeah, what I mean, evolves yeah. anymore? Yeah, I yeah. mean, if you're playing unlimited format, you just go play like you you get like this, you get like turn one art shops, and you get like a Mewtwo level X or whatever. So you just win. Yeah. You can't evolve. And you can't hit the basic. <laughs> yep. Think about that. That, that could happen. Sadly. All right. Um, oh, yeah. Let's move on to. Ultra Ball. Yes, more usable cards, Ultra Ball. <laughs> I like that they gave us this card. It's search for any Pokemon, so... Um, I don't see it being a 4 of in decks, though. No. That, that's no. brutal. That is brutal in your hand. That and Junk Arm, it just creates too many negative... It does combo with Dark Patch. It does yes. combo with Dark Patch, but so does Junk Arm. But yeah, yeah Junk Arm is less likely have... to use early game with. Uh, that's true. The we worst use it for a dark patch, though. Mm-hmm. Just like, just like the worst situation ever. You, you, you need, a, you need to get a Pokemon. You see, you have a, you have, you see, you have an Ultra Ball in, hand, in your discard. You junk arm for that, for that Ultra Ball, and then you Ultra Ball and bring your hand down to like zero. If you yeah, get a Pokemon. And then if you're you junk arm for Ultra Ball, you like better be winning the game or something. <laughs> yeah. It's like no, it's it literally be five more. cards to get one Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Not going for an ultra ball. That's it. Better be pretty important. Yeah, you better be like winning a game off it. But I mean, it's not undoable. It's just... Or at least keeping you in the game. Yeah, at least. Um, or just yeah. junipering it right after. I yeah, I can see this in counts of one or two. Overall, I I just get a couple while you can. Maybe yeah. free in some. Decks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like dark. Um, do you think, like, before we had level ball was kind of used in, like, eel decks, do you think this I, places level ball? Do you think I think there's going to be a mix. Okay. Yeah, there will yeah. be a mix. I don't think it completely replaces eel, uh, level ball, because level ball still gets eels without a, without a, without a um, discard. Mm-hmm. But this can, this discard this energy, which can also be, which can be good, and, um, it can search for EXs, which before were only searchable by, like, collector or dual ball. Yeah, I I can see that being relevant. Um, yeah, moving on. That's all the trainer supporters. I think. We-